Well, howdy and welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for Be Better Country Guitar since 2017. And that opening, I gotta tell you, that was a race against time. Could I get a good take that I liked? A keeper take, if you will, before I drink too much beer. Because unlike some players, my playing does not improve the more I drink. It kind of goes the other way, which is, of course, opposite. The more you drink, the better I sound. But the more I drink, and eh, not so much. Happy to report I got that on beer number one. But I did want some beer involved because I need a beer-fueled honky-tonk vibe, if you will. For Outlaw Licks Volume 3, which is what we've got in store for us now. Of course, there was Volumes 1 and 2, but that's been a couple of years now. And if you ever want to catch those, the best way to do it is at the very end of this video, pretty much at the end of all our videos now. The very last screen contains a jumping off point to a playlist that contains all the B-Bender lessons we've ever published. Over 65 of those bad boys, including Outlaw Licks 1 and 2, so that's the easiest way to jump into those. But I think that's before we had the fancy direct recording and the better lighting and all that stuff. There's still some pretty fun licks there without laws one and two volume. But three, we've got a nice mixture today of straight ahead twang. Mixed with some bender action. going to tie it all together in an outlaw theme for you here so i'd say go grab that beverage of your choice to get that bender instrument and oh look we do have a new hat here i'd be remiss not to point that out got some uh, merch some swag if you will look at that a lovely uh, gift from my brother in cali thank you brother and of course now i've got the hat that's more pressure i've got to come up with twangier and bendier things than i ever had before i don't know anybody saying boy that, that that boy's just all hat no bender we can't have that, so hopefully we'll uh, come through on Outlaw Licks Volume 3 coming up next here at the Bender Bunker. Outlaw Licks Volume 3 now underway. Nice to have you on board. First thing we've really got to do to be, you know, in these Outlaw Lessons, same as the Volume 1 and 2, we've got to take our low E string down to D, so drop it a full step so your 4 and 6 strings match in pitch. It's the only string you're changing, the rest stay in standard tuning. That way we can get the opening riff going. And I'm going to cover that in some detail for those that might be interested. If you're not and you want to skip to the hot bender action and skip all this talking, easy to do. Just put your mouse on the screen. You should see chapter headings pop up. You'll see intro riff. Click to that if you want to go straight to me showing you the riff. And then you'll see the main bender section. Click to that if you want to skip all this and get to the hot bender action. I certainly understand. But no matter what, you do have to take that low E down to D. And you may have noticed in what just that little bit of playing I did there. A little bit of a waver to the sound. That's because I've decided to leave the phaser pedal on I had in the opening. I thought, why not? Let's give it more of that 70s outlaw vibe. So I've got a little phaser pedal. Which phaser pedal is it, you say? Well, that's a good question. Good news, all of our equipment, this guitar, the phaser pedal, all that good stuff is listed in the details section below. So go check that out. You'll also see our Instagram channel linked down there if you want more behind the scenes photos and videos. You know what I just posted the Instagram channel just a few days ago is a clip of the very first time I ever played a B-Bender guitar. It was a rental, it wasn't even mine. I was just trying to see if I wanted to even get into B-Bender because it was a little bit of a cost situation to do so. They, don't, they ain't cheap these days. And I found an old clip on an abandoned hard drive I'd forgotten about of the very first week I ever played Bender guitar right here in the bunker on that rental guitar. So that's kind of fun. And that's just what we do on the Instagram channel, that behind the scenes, scenes stuff. You'll see that link down there. You'll also see the Bender Bunkers PayPal account. That's if you want to send over a virtual beer donation, amount of your choice to say thanks for the content and the hot Bender action. We love to receive those. And there's a safe and easy way to do that with that PayPal link listed below. And if you are enjoying the channel and you want to support us in a quick, free and easy manner, that's good too. Just give us a quick thumbs up and let YouTube and the algorithm know you'd like to see more Hot Bender action featured more often on your screen. Apparently that'll help us do so. And then finally, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you're not yet a member of the Bunker family, we've got a quick and easy way for you to do so. It's that subscription button waiting for you in the bottom corner of your screen. And we don't want you to miss anything. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got over 65 of these lessons already waiting for you on our main channel and every six to eight weeks putting out more. So don't miss anything. Become a subscriber. It's also, a, you know, a way to maybe work on your fear commitment. You know, your girlfriend's always saying you have that. Well, you know, subscribe to a YouTube channel. Work your way up to her. It's the least we can do. All right. As I mentioned before, use your mouse, navigate to whatever the lesson uh, part you want. But right now we're going to be heading into the opening riff here. <laughs> the Bender Bunker.
Looks like you've selected the opening riff section, so let's see how fast we can get through this and get you on to the hot bender action. <laughs> The song is in the dominant key of D, and then the backing track goes to G and A, and then back to D, and this opening riff, as well as the bender sections we'll be covering after this, as usual, are corresponding with what the backing tracks are doing. So we're starting with the dominant key of D, that's why I've got that low E down to D, and I'm doing that, what we'll call the main riff of this. So that's our D section. Now the D riff, I kind of want you to visualize a D7 shape, starting with your four string, fifth string, and the bottom string six. So that's four string third, fifth string second, and then bottom string third, right? That, that kind of triangle pattern. Because we're gonna be working out of that position on this riff, and each of those positions also will include that same string open. <laughs> that position that triangle position I just showed you with open strings involved as well so the riff is basically that bottom E tuned down to D of course twice and then you roll up uh, slide up to the fourth fret on that bottom string and you're going straight to your fifth string open and then hammering right on the second fret of that triangle position I showed you hop up to the four string third for a note and a quick bend and then hit that four string open now go back to your fifth string open roll again onto the second then the four string open and then hop down to that bottom string third with a quick little bend to complete that triangle shape D. Now the backing track goes to G. We're going to do a standard bluegrass kind of riff that looks weird because of the drop D. But really, it's just a bluegrass. And so what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm hitting that bottom six string that's down to D, and I'm hitting it once open, and I'm rolling onto the third and fifth. Real fast. Then what I'm doing is I'm doing open A and rolling on the one and two fret. So it's and then I'm going open fourth, open third. Which of course those together classic G. And we are in G. And then coming back to the root note I started with, which will be your G on the bottom string fifth fret. So so the two together. to the D, the riff we know. Back and track goes to A, so this time we're going to do this. Really, that's me working the five, your, your A string, your five and three string together in this pattern. But I'm doing it in a single chicken picking, very percussive manner. So what I'm doing for this is I am hitting the fifth string open and then rolling on the third and fourth right away. You can see the fingers. And then pop it up with my index finger to the third string second A note, straight to that. And coming back for some dead notes. And then what I'm doing is I'm going up. So again, it's. That's going to be third string fourth and then i'm going to go up here to this position and again i am doing the position i'm showing you but most of what the fifth string is doing at this point is dead noting and just kind of the implication of the fifth string note so once you do the actual five three four roll to start the sequence and then come back that's how it goes so hit the note and there's two dead notes after it which all I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm keeping that position I've showed you but I'm using this finger to dead note the four and five strings so I can get those two dead notes after the actual note on the third string and then up here to the third string six for the last one
back to D now. We're going to do the exact same G bluegrass kind of riff we did, but we're just going to do a little behind the nut action when we get to that open third string. <laughs> And then the final riff will be. Let's go back to that triangle pattern. So we're on four string third. Four string third. So I hit it. I think I pick it twice and then bend it up a little. Then open fourth. And then I do a little bit of a pre bend, maybe a half step pre bend on that fifth string second. Open fifth. Real quick up to the four string open. Open fourth. And then we go down to the bottom string second. A little bit of a bend once you do it. And then just hit that bottom D. Open. part of the fun you can have with that drop D. All kinds of twang waiting for you there. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's get on to the hot bender action. <laughs> I was kind of having fun with the drop D. I was thinking, what if uh, Dwight Yoakam redid uh, Don't Be Cruel by Elvis? Would it sound like that? I don't know. You tell me. Hey, welcome to the Bender section, the main course of the lesson, if you will. And if you jumped ahead and skipped the intro riff, I don't blame you. I know why you came. Hot Bender action. I get it. But one thing we should cover again that we did cover in the intro riff section, you may need to know, we're in the dominant key of D, as in Dwight. And then the backing track also goes to G and A. And so a lot of the corresponding bender, bender positions we're about to cover, of course, will be following along with those key changes. So I wanted you to know that. Here's what we're about to cover. Since you haven't heard it since the beginning, I'll play it for you in isolation. It goes a little bit like this. <laughs> dive in shall we now we are starting in D as you would expect and we're gonna go with very classic D bender box straight ahead classic bender licks because sometimes the classics just work best so we're starting a party with this and let me show you how to do that real quick again we're up here in the D bender box section so you're gonna go four string seventh B string fifth that's primarily what you need to do and I'm sliding up with my ring finger to the four string seventh and then my index fingers following directly on the B string fifth when I get in position, one note there, two notes on the B, or second notes on the B string, back to the fourth to the third, and go back for a fourth note on the B string, but this time I take the bender up. So it's four notes with the bender starting up on that last fourth note. And it's two bends before we bend all the way up and leave the bender engaged. There we are, that's where we're at now. Now we're going to do another classic bender lick. We're going to let our index finger do what it wants to do, which is really just cover those top two on the fifth. And then it allows our little finger to hop up here to the high E seventh for a quick note. B string fifth, high E fifth, back to the B string, let the bender down. And then ring fingers hopping over the G string seventh to complete that classic bender shape. So here we go. Bender's unengaged. Now, backing track's going to G. Not really gonna do a bender section this time. We're gonna go straight twang. That's about nine notes. Let's knock those out. Really, uh, index finger on the third string, third fret for a note, and immediately roll up one to the fourth fret. And then let your ring finger go over to the fourth string, fifth fret for a note. Take the other fingers off and do the G string open next to it. They're ringing together, they're the same note. Gonna find out if your guitar is in tune. So there's four notes. 
and immediately go to this section. And that is four string open, and then you're rolling on the second and third fret, and immediately hitting the G string open again next to it. So here's what we have. As that G string is open and ringing, we're gonna hop over here and hit the bottom G string on the detuned bottom string fifth fret. Give a little waggle. So all together. And since the last thing you do before that last note is really hit your open G string, make sure it keeps ringing. I really like the way it rings with that last note together. Two together. All right, so that's your G section. So here's what we've got so far. Now we're going to go up the neck in three positions with our bender. For D, that's what it sounds like. And it's really working out of the D7 shape, back where we started the D bender box. We're ending up here on the top two strings on the 10th, which is the top of really what would be a D bar chord. And that's why it's working nicely for D. All right, so we're down here. We're going to, on positions one, two, and three, on positions one and two, we're leaving the high E string open. We'll be using it, but it'll be open. So let's go ahead and make that D7 chord, index finger, B string, first fret, and then middle finger on your third string second, right? Let's hit those two together, take the bender up, and when we get to the top of our bend, hit the high E open next to it. And then do in that sequence with a real quick dead note. So it's those two strings up, high E, dead note. That's what it should sound like. Bender went up. Bender's coming down, so I can segue into position two, which again is this four string seventh, B string fifth, like we started with. That's what you're doing. So again, I'm sliding into that seventh fret on the four string with my ring finger, just like we started with index fingers falling naturally in the B string fifth. Taking that up, high E open again, and a dead note to end that as well. So same mentality as before. That's it. Now, bender was engaged. I'm going to let it down again, go to position three of three, which again was just the top two strings on the 10th fret with my index finger. Super simple here. Let's keep it easy, but twangy. And start with the B string on the 10th, take the bender up with it, hit the high E next to it, and then come back to the B string to let it down. That's all you got to do. And the bender's unengaged again. So here we go, three together. All right, our D section is over. Back and track's going to A. I just came down on the top two on the 10th fret with my index finger. I gotta go to A. What am I next to? I'm gonna keep this easy and twangy. That's kind of our motto, easy and twangy. And I'm gonna let my little finger cover the top two on the 12th, because I know that is the top of the A bender box high octave. That's gonna work nicely for A. So let's go do something there we haven't done before. And then I'm gonna segue that into the seventh shape for A, which is really kind of a, think of a D seventh, but moved up here. So. Not really gonna use the high E, so let's just worry about the B string eighth and the G string ninth. But first thing we gotta do is little finger on the top two on the twelfth. Again, hit the B string, take the bender up, and then hit the high E next to it and do a dead note. Notice that bender stays engaged. So bender's engaged, just did that quick little sequence on the top two on the twelfth. Hop down to the seventh position for A I just showed you. Again, my index finger's on the B string eighth, G string ninth next to it. Start with your B string, let the bender down on the eighth, and then go immediately and hit the note next to it on the G string ninth. So we end there with the bender down and the B and G string ringing together. Fingers are still there. Let's go ahead and hit them together, double stop them together, and take the bender up and down. Give it a quick bend up and down, and then give it a little bit of vibrato at the end. Cool. Now the backing track's going to D. My hand's right there. What haven't I done that's easy to do for D? Well, I'm going to do this. So I just came off that A7 shape. I'm going to leave my index finger where it was. That is B string 8. And I'm going to let, I'm just doing my ring finger. You can use whatever finger you want. High E 10. So 8 and 10 on the top two. So I'm going to pre-bend. And then I'm gonna double stop two hits on those and bring the bender down. The minute it comes down, I'm letting my index finger cover where it already is, the top two on the eighth, and I'm gonna hit those two together and take it back up. So pre-bend, eight, 10, two, and then down. 
top two on the eighth with the index finger back up. And then let's go classic again and do a D bender box run. Still got the bender engaged. Index finger goes down, top two, fifth. Start on the high E, hit the B to let the bender down, and then end as you would expect on the G string seventh with your ring finger. So that D sequence, D sequence again. Bender's unengaged, we're done with D, backing track's going to G. So where am I for G? Well, what makes sense to me is I was just playing with that A7 shape for A, so obviously chromatically two down would be G, so I've got the G bender box seventh shape right there waiting for me, so I'm gonna do this. And so I just came off the D. I'm getting in that triangle seventh position for G. This time I am gonna use the high E where I didn't use it for the A, I'm gonna use all three of that triangle position for the G7. Now I'm gonna start by hitting the B string there. Again, I've got my index finger. So that's how I've set up that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the index finger, the B string, take the bender up. And then I'm doing a real quick triplet with the high E there on the seventh. And the way I'm achieving that is using my thumb and index finger. I'm gonna pull back a little bit so you can see that. If I was using a pick, I wouldn't be able to go that fast probably. Some of you might be able to, I couldn't. So I would change it maybe more of a. Something like that. So there's a little option for you if you're going pick only. I'm going with the uh, two fingers. So again, what I did is I started with the B string there on the sixth. Already had my uh, ring finger on the high E seventh. So I could hit that next. Came back to the still bent B. Went back to the E string. This time I went open though, took my finger off, went open high E. And then I hit the B string and let the bender down. And immediately went into the G string seventh. And then like we did before, I still got the B and G string ringing with those two fingers. I'm gonna blast it again up and down. All right, we're done with G, and we're gonna have to get twangy back in D. Well, let's just go back to where we were, keep it simple and twangy. I'm gonna go back to the D bender box position, right there out of the G seventh area. So again, index finger top two on the fifth, and then my ring finger covering the G string on the seventh. I'm gonna pre-bend, and this time I'm gonna deaden the strings with the fret hand, and I'm gonna go back to my pick real quick, and I'm gonna dead note, I'm gonna really get percussive on my down pick on the dead notes, and then I'm gonna come back and up pick live, and so what I'm doing is I'm pre-bending, down picking dead notes, and then when I up pick live, I'm going high E fifth, B string fifth, letting the bender down straight into the G string seventh. Sounds like that. So I'll do that out of the G seventh for context. So again, I pre-bent, and then I just dead pick down and live pick back up. Of course, I went way back to get maximum Twang. We're gonna now we've got to do one last bit in A. I really like the way that sounded, so I'm gonna recreate that magic in A. So all I gotta do is take my index finger down to the third string second, leave the top two, two strings open this time, but I'm gonna deaden them again with the rest of my fingers right here so I can go back, pre-engage the bender just like I did for D, now I'm doing it for A. Dead pick down, get real percussive, and then come back on those open top two strings, E string, B string that's bent, letting the bender down. Letting it down really dramatically, though, as you'll hear, and then ending on that A note, third string, second fret. You can really make that open B string jump out with your bender, can't you? So here's the D going into the A. And then we're gonna end with just a twangy riff, kind of what we covered in that intro riff section. So if you didn't hear that, here's what uh, you could do. You're gonna go to your fourth string, third fret, pick that, give it a quick little bend, and go open fourth string. And then open fifth string, roll on to the second fret. So. And then open fourth, open fifth. And then you end with super twang on that bottom second fret. I mean, get twangy with it, hit it, and then, and then go open for that low D note. Put it all together, shall we?
go. You have all the pieces necessary for Outlaw Lakes Volume 3. And as usual, I hope you take the parts you like, mix them and match, match them, bastardize them, make them your own. That's the point of this lesson, actually all the lessons we put out, just to throw a lot out there so you can take what you like and make it your own, and I hope you do. Now, if you want an Outlaw Licks 4, kind of more hot bender action in this kind of theme, let me know in the comments or give it a like, or I can usually tell by the amount of views it gets. It's been, again, it's been a couple of years since we've done the Outlaw Licks, and I don't know if there's any traction for it, but if you enjoyed it and you want an Outlaw Licks 4, let me know, and we will work on that, because that would involve me drinking more beer and coming up with more guitar licks, which uh, don't tell anyone. I'm going to do anyway. But hey, we could call it Outlaw, Outlaw 4. All right, I'm going to get on out of here and come up with the next Hot Bender Action lesson. Hopefully, we'll have that out there in the next few weeks for you. But until then, remember, it's never too late to go on a bender. Hope you do. And I'll see you again real soon. Keep it bent.